Good morning. Uh, it's good to have you all here and good to be with you here this morning on the second Sunday in Advent. Um, there are just a few announcements that I would like to draw to your attention before the service begins. Uh, the first is that we have set out a, I guess, a little collection box out there underneath the table in the entryway. The Independence Area Food Pantry is in need of these plastic grocery bags. Uh, and so if you have some of those at home, as I'm sure we probably all have about 100 of them at home right now, uh, if you bring them here, uh, you can put them in that, in that white container, and Joan has offered to uh, make those uh, get their way over to Independence. Uh, so thank you, everyone, if you bring those. Uh, some people have been putting them in there already. Uh, please do keep that up. It is very much appreciated. Uh, looking ahead at the schedule for this week, uh, we will have uh, business as usual, uh, but one thing to note um, is that elders and council will be on Tuesday, uh, because we are in Advent. The midweek service this week is here, uh, and Pastor Volkert will be filling in for me, uh, as he probably will be for, for many years to come, because uh, the CLS Christmas program, so Community Lutheran School Christmas program, is on Wednesday. Uh, that one is singing in it. Uh, so uh, Pastor Volkert has offered to, to fill in for me, so please do come and be here if you can. Um, it may or may not be on the live stream, uh, so please do come uh, and be here for the midweek service this week. Uh, otherwise, uh, there's some other notes in here. Uh, there is, I guess, one thing is uh, in your bulletin, you have a list of our shut-ins, uh, both for here uh, and for at Jessup. Uh, and some of them are shut-ins. Some of them are, are temporarily at home due to surgery or illness or injury. Um, if you would like to send them a card, uh, say this Advent and this Christmas season, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, I know that they would enjoy that very much. Uh, most or all of them really miss being here on a regular basis, so uh, having some contact with their church family uh, is, uh, well, it's very good. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 333, hymn 333. <laughs> This morning we follow Divine Service Setting 1, beginning on page 151. Uh, there is one note about the service, and that is 
Because we are in Advent, we don't sing the hymn of praise. So after the Kyrie on page 153, we skip to page 156. So just make note of that. I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 50. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before Him is a devouring fire, Around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent is from Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked. For they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold... I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 15. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, So by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding on what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap, for it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 336.
I'd like to invite the children to come forward. Is that why you were crawling out of the pew? You were getting ready to come up? Yeah. Very good. Is there one more that's going to come up with us? Oh, his shoes are off. Is that what that is? <laughs> well, you guys remember when uh, God spoke to Moses from the burning bush, he told Moses to take his shoes off because he was on holy ground. That's Exodus chapter 3. So maybe we were doing that. Well, good morning, you guys. It's very good to see you. Now, I was thinking about the, the readings this morning and, and my sermon that's going to be up in a little bit. And uh, have you ever told somebody you're going to do something and then you didn't do it? Yeah, maybe. Or has somebody ever told you they were going to do something and then they didn't do it? How did that feel? Uh, yeah, so it got your, uh, we call that getting your hopes up. When somebody tells you they're going to do something and you're excited and then it doesn't happen. That's called, that's called getting your hopes up, right, Grayson? Yep. And, and it doesn't feel very good, does it? You know, to have somebody tell you they're going to do something and they don't do it. But what if they tell you they're going to do something and then they do it? That feels pretty good, right? Yeah. All right? Well, St. Paul. Yeah? Yeah, well, it's good to have good friends. She's my BFF. That's great, your BFF. All right, that's a new one. All right, well, actually, St. Paul was talking about that in the readings. Uh, in the reading, and he said that, you know who promised to do something for us? Well, well God did. You know, God promised to, to send a Savior who would die on the cross and then rise from the dead so that, that we would be forgiven and go to heaven. And the whole thing that Paul's talking about is God promised something, and then he did it. That he sent Jesus into the flesh to be our Savior, to die on the cross and rise again, because he promised he would do it. And since God is God, when he, when he promises something, then he does it. And so that's why I want you to remember this week, that, that God promised to send us a Savior, and then he did it. And you guys know what holiday we're celebrating this month in just a little bit? Christmas. Christmas, and what is Christmas? Christmas is winter, but whose birthday is Christmas? Uh, Jesus' birthday. Yeah. See, God promised to send a Savior, and then he did. All right, you guys can go back to your seats. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text this Sunday, the second Sunday in Advent, is our epistle reading, Romans chapter 15. The title on the, the front of our bulletin this Sunday is Populous Zion. And it's, it means people of Zion. And it's taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 62, where it says... Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation comes. In the liturgy, we change daughter to, to people. And we should know this particular phrase because we hear it twice every year, here on the, the second Sunday in Advent and then also on Palm Sunday. St. John cites this passage as being fulfilled in Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When he rode in humble and mounted on a donkey... He was bringing about our salvation. It is also connected thematically to this season and, and to this Sunday as we consider the nearness of our Lord's return. He himself encouraged us in the gospel when he said, When these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. 
before we continue talking about our Lord's return, which, to be truthful, comes up a lot at the, the end of the church year and then the beginning of the new one, it might be good for us to talk about why Jesus came the first time. Now, it would be easy for us to just say the creed at this point and, and be done with the sermon. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. There's our answer. Jesus came in the flesh so that he could die and rise for us so that we might be forgiven our sins. But why? So today, let's engage our inner three-year-old and, and consider why. Our Lord came in the flesh to show his truthfulness, confirming his promises to the patriarchs, and so that all might glorify God for his mercy. So much says St. Paul in our text. By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he wrote, For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. In the context of this chapter St. Paul set our Lord before the congregation at Rome as an example. The congregation there was divided among themselves, uh, particularly among ethnic lines. For within the congregation you had the Jewish Christians. These were descended from Abraham according to the flesh and, and formerly practiced Judaism before being converted to Christ. Uh, St. Paul would be an example of that. But then there were also the, the proselytes, uh, these who were Gentiles who were formerly members of the synagogue practicing Judaism, but now also were believers in Jesus. And then you had some who were formerly pagans, who were now Christians. St. Paul's desire for them as their spiritual father was for them to welcome each other as Christ had already welcomed them all to the true faith. St. Paul then touched on why the Son of God came in the flesh and, and why he came as a Jew. We know, of course, that Jesus is without beginning or end. He is the eternally begotten Son of God the Father, the second person of the Trinity, the creator of all that exists. In our time, he came into the flesh. But why did he do it in the way that he did why was he not born a, a German, or, or an American for that matter? Well, first, St. Paul says, to make firm and beyond doubt his promises to the patriarchs. And patriarchs is the term that we use for some of our earliest fathers in the faith, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you want to be specific, but we can extend it out to Adam, to Enoch, to Noah, and all the faithful men of those first generations. It was to these that the first promises of the Messiah were given. In the garden, God promised Adam and Eve that a Savior would be one of their descendants. When God preserved Noah, he made clear that the Messiah would come from his family. Later, God spoke to Abraham and said, Your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And he made the same promise to Isaac and to Jacob. These promises were passed down through the generations among the faithful of Israel, each succeeding generation trusting in and looking forward to their fulfillment. Every little while, God would make it clearer. When Jacob blessed his sons shortly before dying, God revealed that the Savior would come from the tribe of Judah. God revealed to King David that the Son of God would be one of his own sons. And then when the time was right, it happened. When Augustus was emperor of Rome, Quirinius, the governor of Syria, Herod, the king of Judea, Jesus was born, just as was promised. He was born according to the flesh, a descendant of Abraham through Isaac and through Jacob. He was born of the tribe of Judah and of David, through his adoptive father, Joseph. God promised through Isaiah that Emmanuel would be born of a virgin. And so he was. 
This all happened because God promised it would. Jesus came into the flesh to be our Savior. This is true. And he came in the way that he did because that's what he promised. St. Paul wrote, Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. Again, in context, St. Paul is setting Jesus forward as an example to the congregation of how God welcomes people of every tribe, every language, people, and race. Jesus came in the flesh as a Jew to make firm the promise that God had given to Abraham. But that doesn't mean that he didn't come for everyone else, too. The division that comes up often in the Bible is that between Jew and Gentile. A Jew, as far as the Scriptures are concerned, and for this purpose, is someone who is descended from Abraham. A Gentile is somebody who isn't. We most likely are Gentiles. Jesus indeed came as promised to Abraham, but then he was also promised to the Gentiles. And here the Holy Spirit is very clever. For what follows in our reading are, are four separate quotes from the Old Testament. In our Lord's time, the the scriptures weren't divided up into two, kind of like we think of now, the Old Testament and the New Testament, but into three. You had the books of Moses, the Torah, then you had the prophets and the Psalms. And these four quotes in our text are from each of those sections. First, St. Paul quotes from the Psalms, a passage which is also in 2 Samuel 22. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And then after this, he quotes from Deuteronomy, and then again from the Psalms, and then from Isaiah. And the point is that God had always planned for the inclusion of the Gentiles in his salvation. And for this, we should be thankful. For we were not born heirs of the promise, but children of wrath. We were not born the offspring of Abraham to whom were entrusted the scriptures. Rather, we were brought into the family. Through the word which was preached to us and through our baptism, we were grafted in like wild branches to a cultivated olive tree. God had mercy on us and brought us into his family just as he promised through the prophets. Through the death of Jesus, the dividing wall of hostility between Jew and Gentile was broken down, and we, with all believers in Jesus, become one daughter, one people of Zion. Jesus came in the flesh in the way he did to establish forever his promises to the patriarchs and so that we might praise his glory. Someday soon he will return on the clouds and, and bring every promise to its completion. As the lightning flashes across the heavens, so will be his coming. He will gather us up to the clouds with all the faithful and so we will always be with the Lord, as St. Paul says elsewhere. It's easy for us to take promises for granted. Husbands, it seems, are very good at committing themselves to a certain activity and then forgetting it shortly afterward. Parents in general do this too. We, we promise to give our children something and then we forget about it, or we promise to punish our children and then instead show mercy. Thankfully, God does not forget. Instead, He keeps His promise. Our Lord, the second person of the Trinity, came in the flesh to be our Savior, just as He promised to our fathers. And by His grace, He has also brought us Gentiles into the family. Therefore, let us praise and thank Him always and look forward with joy to His second coming. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Apostles' Creed is written for us on page 159. I invite you to stand as we speak it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of hosts, you have given all judgment over to the Son of Man, our incarnate Lord Jesus Christ. Make us ever mindful of his coming and keep us steadfast in the word of Christ, that in accord with him, we may live in harmony with one another and together glorify you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of your Christ will not. Give to our congregation the strength to endure whatever trials you see fit to send us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, Send pastors and missionaries to proclaim your saving gospel, especially to those who have not heard it, that your Holy Spirit would cause them to abound in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, preserve the schools of the church and our baptized children, that our people may constantly be nurtured in the hope of our redemption at Christ's appearing. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Everlasting God, you warn us against preoccupation with the cares of this life while setting tasks before us in which to love you and serve our neighbor. Grant us joy and skill in our various vocations that we may faithfully serve you with cleansed minds, awaiting the day of our Lord's return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, be near to our nation and its armed forces, and guide all nations of the world, so that those entrusted with positions of public service might serve honorably and well for the protection of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, give ear to the cries of your children. In your goodness, restore the ill, the lonely, the homebound, the depressed, those near death, and those in any need. Shine your face upon all those who call upon you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing. Grant repentance and firm trust to all who commune this day, that receiving your true body and blood, they may be forgiven and abound in hope able to stand with a clean conscience before your judgment throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your anger at our sin is just, and yet your mercy abounds to us for redemption. Grant us repentant hearts that we would not continue in sin or wander away from the faith, but rather recognize our sin, confess it, and receive your forgiveness. Grant us a clear conscience for Christ's sake, that we may live joyfully and without fear. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue by singing the offertory. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. 
I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us, by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night on which he was betrayed, it took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. You may be seated as we continue with the distribution. I invite you to stand for the dismissal. Now this, the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We continue by singing the post-communion canticle. Thank the Lord and sing His praise. Tell everyone what He has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear His name. He recalls His promises and leads His people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our closing hymn, hymn 337. Thank you. 